Need to create a VM in Azure? I can help with that. Hello, I'm Travis, and this is Raldos. If you're interested in deploying a virtual machine in Azure, but aren't sure where to begin, or if you'd like a deeper understanding of the configuration options available, this video will help. Together, we'll walk through creating a VM in the Azure portal, review configuration options, and highlight strategies for cost savings along the way. Before that, please like, subscribe, share with a friend, and click the bell icon for notifications of new content. Check out my Azure courses on udemy.com, including a beginner's guide to the AZ900. Links are below, and thank you, channel members. Your support is appreciated. Back to it. We'll get to the demo in just a second, but let's start with a quick overview of what we'll accomplish in this video. Well, as the title says, we'll create an Azure VM, but there are a couple other resources that go along with it. We need a resource group. Think of this as a bucket for Azure resources. The resources in a resource group should have a similar life cycle. We can set permissions or RBAC roles at the resource group and, as we'll see at the end, we can use it to clean up unused resources. A virtual machine also requires a virtual hard drive. In Azure, that resource is a managed disk. This is where the operating system and data is stored. Then we need a virtual network interface card or VNIC and a public IP address for VM access. Also, every VNIC needs to be attached to a virtual network, so we'll create one of those as well. We'll also track the costs along the way. As a bonus, I'll show you an option that can save a lot of money on lab and test environments, as well as how to remove the VM and related resources once you no longer need the VM. Let's jump into the Azure portal to get started. Here we are in the portal. You'll need access to an Azure subscription, of course, to follow along. Let's start out by searching for virtual machines. From virtual machines, we'll select create a virtual machine. To start out, we'll make sure the subscription is correct and we'll create a new resource group. Name it whatever you'd like, demo VM RG for this example. There's no real reason to add an RG at the end of the name of a resource group. You can always tell it's a resource group. It's just a habit I fell into. Give it a name, demo VM for this example. In production, we'd want to use a naming standard and maybe put a number at the end if there are multiple servers to support a service or application. Next is the region. This is important. This is the geographical location where the VM will reside. The region can also affect the cost and some of the features available with the VM. Select the location someplace close to where you are, for example. For me, that's central US. Under availability options, we have no infrastructure redundancy required, availability zones, VM scale sets, and availability set. Some Azure regions are split into zones that we can leverage for high availability. If you don't see availability zones, that's because the region you selected doesn't support them. High availability requires multiple VMs, and since we're only deploying one, no infrastructure redundancy is required. Under security type, we can leave it set to trusted launch. Next, under image, we'll select the OS we want to deploy. If we go to all images, from here we can search and select a wide array of images. They include Windows, Linux, and some images that have applications pre-configured. Before we select an image, let's go to the Azure pricing calculator to see how the image we select will impact the cost of the VM. You can get here by searching for the Azure pricing calculator. Let's add a virtual machine for our product that's listed under popular. You could also just search for it. And if we scroll down, start by changing the region to match your example. And while you do that, notice the price may change. The cost of real estate, power, and labor can vary by region. Those are all factors that affect the price of Azure resources. Next, notice the OS license is included. There's a cost to the Windows Server OS. It's licensed per core. That cost is reflected in the price of the virtual machine. It shows the virtual hardware cost and the OS cost, and then the total. Watch what happens if we switch to a Linux OS. The OS cost goes away. That's because Linux is open sourced. There's no charge for the OS. We only have to pay for the virtual machine. Let's put it back to Windows. There's also an option to use hybrid benefits. This is a benefit for some customers with on-prem Windows Server licensing. If those licenses have virtualization rights, we can apply them to an Azure VM and remove the OS cost, but we don't have that. Let's go back to License Included and then back to the Azure portal. For this example, we'll use Windows Server 2022 Data Center Azure Edition with Hot Patch. 
select that or any other Windows option you'd like to use. This OS only supports the 64-bit architecture. We can save money with a spot discount, but there's a reason for that. Spot instances run in spare capacity in an Azure data center. If that capacity is needed for full paying customers, Microsoft will shut down spot instances to free up the capacity. This is a good option for workloads that can be interrupted, but for this example, let's leave it unchecked. Next is size. This is one of the most significant factors on the VM cost. The more RAM and CPU that's added, the higher the cost will be. Let's go to see all sizes. There are a lot of sizing options for VMs in Azure. These include general use, memory optimized, CPU optimized, GPU support, and so on. For this VM, let's change the filter to two vCPU cores and four gigs of RAM. That's the minimum I suggest for any Windows VM. From here, let's compare the B series V2 with the D series V6. Each letter has a different meaning. The B stands for burstable and the D is for general use. Notice the B2LS V2 and the D2LS V6 both have two cores and four gigs of RAM, but have a significantly different price. Why is that? Here's why. The B stands for burstable. The CPU is capped or throttled at a percentage based on the size of the VM. While it runs under that cap, it builds a credit. That credit allows it to burst beyond the cap. Once the credit runs out, the CPU is throttled again. This makes it a cheap option for a lot of dev, test, and even some production workloads. Running a domain controller in Azure, for example, that could be a bursty workload. We'll use the B series for this example because the performance isn't a factor and it's very inexpensive. And keep watching for another way to save significantly on this VM. Keep in mind that this is not a good option for workloads that require a lot of CPU usage for extended periods. SQL Server and AVD Session Host, for example. I've heard stories of organizations using the B-Series and then wondering why performance suffers. This example will use the B2LS V2. We'll select that. Let's go back to the pricing calculator. Let's set the category to general use and the instant series to BSV2. Under instance, make sure that B2LS V2 is selected. The price drops significantly from that D series. Let's go back to the portal. For this example, we won't enable hibernation. Enter a local administrator username and password. The username can't be reserved words like administrator or Microsoft. Local admin is a common option. Keep track of these credentials. We'll need them coming up. For simplicity, we're going to use RDP to access this VM and we'll need to open RDP port 3389. Another option is to use Azure Bastion to access VMs. The last option on the page is to apply hybrid benefits. Leave that unchecked unless you have hybrid benefits. Go next to disks. The image default size is 127 gigs. That's pretty common for a Windows OS. There are three disk types, not including the zone redundant options. They are premium SSD, standard SSD, and standard hard drive. Each offer different levels of performance. Let's go back to the pricing calculator. Let's scroll down to manage disks. Let's check out the different prices between these. If we go to the 128 gig standard hard drive, and we do need at least one disk. And then let's look at the standard SSD, the E10, which is the 128 gig, and then the premium SSD. That's the P10. Notice for this example, the premium SSD is half the cost of the B-series VM we selected. For this example, we'll use the standard SSD. Let's go back to the portal and we'll select standard SSD. It's important to keep all costs in mind. The default option, the premium SSD, is twice the cost of the standard SSD. If we don't need that level of performance, why pay the premium? Just as important, don't under-provision your resources. Some services or applications may need higher performance. This is why it's important to understand the workload requirements when moving services to the cloud. We can leave the rest and go to networking. We can leave this set as default. This option will create a virtual network in the same resource group with the 10.0.0.1 IP space. It also adds a public IP. We'll use that to log into the VM. This is fine for our quick deployment, but in production, it may be best to create a separate virtual network in a different resource group and then attach the new VM to that virtual network. That way, all the VMs can share the virtual network and have connectivity to each other. Let's go next to management. 
This next step is optional, but it will save you a lot of money when it can be used. Let's select Enable Auto Shutdown. Okay, I need to call out one important term when we're talking about Azure VMs, deallocate. If we shut down a VM from the Azure Management Plane, that can be from the Portal, PowerShell, or the Azure CLI, the VM is shut down and deallocated. Once deallocated, any reservations for the physical hardware it was running on is released and charges stop for the VM. If we deallocate the VM for a test or dev environment, we can save a lot of money. But if you're like me, you may forget to do it or think you're gonna come back to it later and you don't. Nothing's worse than paying for resources that you don't use. By setting up auto shutdown, we can make sure that those VMs are shut down every day and then stop paying for them. Let's configure auto shutdown. I'm not much of a night owl, so this example will be set to 10 p.m. Central Time. Add a notification if you'd like. I don't need to get that email. And a couple items to note, this does not apply to storage. Storage is persistent and we pay for that until it's deleted. Also, if you shut down the computer from within the OS by just going to start shutdown, that does not deallocate the VM and charges will continue to apply. You'll still need to go to the Azure portal and shut down or deallocate the VM from there. That's it for the required configuration. Let's go to review and create. Once validation passes, click create. This step will take a couple minutes to finish. The video will pause here until it's done. Congratulations, the VM finished. Let's go to the resource. You can also locate the VM by going to virtual machines from search. At the top of the overview page, we have some controls. We can stop and deallocate the VM, we can restart it, or if the VM shut down, we can start it. To log in, let's go to connect and select the connect option. Download the RDP file. Be sure it's approved if the browser tries to block it. This works with a Windows client. If you're not on Windows, you can use an RDP client and go directly to the public IP address. Let's locate that RDP file and open it. Click connect to connect to the VM. Enter the credentials we gave the VM when we created it. We can click yes at this connection warning. It's using a self-signed certificate to encrypt the connection. Congratulations, you're now logged into the VM. From here, you can run applications or install services or do whatever you need to do. Remember that if you go to start and then shut down from within the VM, That will shut down the OS, but not deallocate it in Azure. If we go to the VM overview page, it takes a couple seconds, but then the status will show stopped. At this point, we're still paying for that virtual hardware. If we stop it from the Azure portal, after a few seconds, the state changes to stopped deallocated. We're no longer paying for that virtual hardware, but we are still paying for the storage. Once we're finished, we can remove the VM and all related resources by deleting the resource group. We can get to the resource group with the link from the VM or search for resource groups. Then locate and open your resource group. Here's a list of all the resources we just created. Because they're in the same resource group, we can remove everything by selecting delete the resource group. Select the option to force delete the VM and then enter the resource group name to confirm and delete. If you're sure you want to permanently delete all those resources, we can hit the delete confirmation. It will take a couple minutes to finish, but that will permanently remove the VM and all related resources in that resource group. That is how to create, log into, and remove a virtual machine in Azure. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, and thanks for watching.